Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Thanks for pressing play and for spending some time with me. I've been asked about this topic, sort of this topic, for like forever. I can't tell you how many times, you know, Jacob, will you talk about this? Jacob, will you talk about that? Jacob, don't you know about the firmament? That there's waters above and waters beneath? Don't you know that we live in a dome, Jacob? Jacob, don't you know that the earth is flat? I can't stand this channel. I'm out of here. I can't believe you believe in space. I Today's show is going to put uh, maybe a feather in uh, the cap of those who believe in flat earth. Maybe not. Doesn't really matter because that's not really what the show is about. The shocking new theory that was presented by an Oxford professor who published their findings in the uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics Journal. They have a new theory that will take dark energy and dark matter and unify the two. It's interesting that we've been talking about this. Remember the dark, dark matter hurricane just a little while ago? Well, now they got this new thing that they believe will 100% explain what makes up this 95% of everything. They're calling it dark fluid. It's a mysterious fluid that we can't see or measure or anything else, but it produces a negative mass. We're going to get into that on today's show, but we're also going to get into the creation story. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to get into that today in a way like you've never, you've never heard, you've never seen, life-changing way, okay? But we're also going to marry this to that belief that there may be waters above the firmament. The firmament, which would be, you know, the expanse, as God called it, the heavens. So buckle up, people, because the truth of who you are and what's going on is about to be revealed. Okay, so let's get into the uh, the discovery first. Let's get that out of the way, okay? Because this is actually a big deal. It actually uh, solves a big riddle that they've had in astrophysics and physics for quite some time. One of the biggest, annoying, most annoying problems in uh, physics is that of dark matter and dark energy. Okay, they really don't. They don't understand what it is. They don't really know. They don't have an idea. They don't really know exactly what it is. They can't really measure it, but they believe that it makes up something like 95% of everything and kind of holds everything in on everything. Watch my show on the Dark Matter Hurricane if you want to know more. Well, a new theory has been put forth, one that has been put through simulations and actually produces the universe's status that we would expect. So there's a lot of credibility to the fact that there is, out there, beyond the firmament, fluid. Lots of it. Research published in the Journal for Astronomy and Astrophysics suggests that dark matter and energy can both be explained if they treated it as a negative fluid mass. A negative mass fluid. Basically, this invisible fluid behaves the opposite way of all conventional materials. If you push against it, it would accelerate towards you. Jamie Farnes, the Oxford physicist behind this new theory, created a computer model that explored how this dark fluid would interact with everything and how it would affect the universe. He found that it could explain why galaxies are held together as they spin instead of flying apart. It's a tantalizing hint at, uh, that his new model may indeed be true. So there's dark fluid. There's fluid out there. If there is this dark fluid that could be held holding everything together, it could be considered the waters above the firmament. Maybe, maybe not. If you look at it a different way. And that's the reason why I came on here to talk to all of you. Not to tell you that I believe in flat earth. I'm not there. Okay, I've looked at the research, it's very compelling, but I don't, I don't, I don't believe it yet. Now, as I know that anything could change, so I'm not going to say that you're all wrong. I'm going to say that this new theory is something that probably should get you excited, I guess, you know, but what is the creation story really about? What is it really about? 
Is it really about the, you know, how this happened literally and this happened literally and this happened literally? The first day of creation, this. The second day when God created the firmament and separated the waters from the waters? Is that what it's really about or is there more? Could it be that the Genesis story and what this video is really all about now that you're here, right? Could it be that it has more to do with you? That perhaps you, the idea of you, is that earth that is without form and a void, right? Void of what? Void of the truth, void of understanding, and how as the days go, the lights go on. If you look at pre-modern human cultures that they all believed in this dome, they looked up, they saw blue, they figured there was water on the other side. Kind of like we're a big terrarium or a, a goldfish bowl, if you will. In short, they believed that there was an endless amount of water outside of their little goldfish bowl. But I'm here to say that the story of creation is, is much deeper than just that. That the waters symbolize something much, much more important. And that the earth and the heavens and the moon and the sun and all the herbs that are grown and the animals that grow up are actually symbols of you and me and our growth and our life. And yes, also a picture of what possibly literally happened. So let's first talk about this firmament, okay? Um, the firmament God calls heaven. By the way, that's, that's a very big clue. It's the word firmament literally means expanse um, as a support or a vault of heaven supporting waters above and waters beneath. It was considered by the Hebrews as solid and supporting waters. Fluid! Is it the 95% of dark fluid? The negative mass? Is that what it is? Is there something more to it? I don't know. But that's not the point. See, this is where it gets tricky because... <laughs> God dwells in heaven, right? Jesus said that heaven is within you. So perhaps the story in creation in Genesis 1 has another, uh, has another great truth hidden within it, waiting for you to keep watching and checking the bell and subscribing and sharing and doing all that good stuff to help me out. So let's start off with Genesis chapter 1, shall we? Okay, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, um, if you... If you know anything about scripture, okay, words that sometimes you have a hard time understanding what they are, you can go and you can, you know, do a search of the same word and just read everything that it says about that word in scripture. It'll give you the, uh, it'll kind of give you an idea of what it means. So in other words, if I type heaven into a BibleGatewaySearch.com, then I'll be able to read everything that scripture says about heaven. Now heaven, right, Jesus said, is within you. Heaven, uh, Jesus said, is not meat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy, and power. Heaven, God says, is where he dwells, which is within the temple of God. And then you take it to Isaiah uh, uh, 55, where it says, as the heavens are above or high above the earth, so are God's ways high above man's. Heavens, the truth of God. The earth, the understanding of man. Do you see? So now let's take it a step further, okay? First Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Those that are of the earth are earthy. Those that are from heaven above are heavenly. In other words, you are what you, uh, you eat, you know? You are what you eat. You are what you believe. If you're, you know, if you're uh, nurtured by the ways of this world and the ego of man, you're driven by that, then you're going to be, uh, you know, going to be an earthen vessel that hasn't ever uh, been enlightened to the truth. But when it comes to the things of God, if you're... Uh, if you're, if you're focused on the things of God on a regular basis, then you will be revealing that in the world. Now, the waters is a big thing in Genesis 1, right? Because there's the, the waters above and the waters beneath, right? In the beginning, that's all it was, was perhaps this dark fluid that all of a sudden was then separated. Okay, so let's, let's, let's read this line by line, okay? So Genesis 1. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, if you look at that, and you substitute a couple of things, and you understand that the earth is basically man's understanding, 
Okay, you could say, or there's the soul of man, right? As of heaven, or heavenly, as of the earth, or earthly, as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways, my thinking, my thoughts above man's thoughts. So, in the beginning, man's understanding was without form. Now, what's interesting about that word form is it comes from the Hebrew word tuhu, which I like saying tuhu, right? Was without tuhu, and it means literally confusion. So when you read without form, you think of, you know, there's just this water, there's just not, there was no form to it. It was just, you know, but then, pst, and it was void, right? It was, it was nothing there. But see, that's not what the scripture actually says. What the scripture says is that the earth was confused. The earth was without understanding. It's interesting. And void. And what is void? It means empty of the truth. So in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the spiritual man, the spiritual understanding of man, and the earth, the carnal understanding of man, the natural and the spiritual, the heaven and the earth, the earth was without form and void. In darkness, I don't know how many times you go through scripture, if you just type in the word darkness, you're going to get ignorance. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness, the deep is the depths of your understanding. In the beginning, man, like this is the day that we're in. This is why I think it's a beautiful thing, because now we're seeing that there are other waters out there. And so God moved on the face of the waters. Now, in scripture, if you know the face of someone, you understand it intimately, right? Because no one, no one has seen the face of God at any time. Scripture says this. You don't know God intimately. All, all that can be revealed about God. It's like, I can't tell you, right? I can't, I can't, no one really knows. There's no way because um, he's so much higher than man. As God's thoughts are above man, so are man's. See what I'm saying? So there's no really, there's no way for us to, to know the face. But God can move upon the face of our waters, our understanding. He can move upon that. And what he can do is he can plant the truth within you. So what's the first thing that happens if you get this idea of people that are just walking around, egotistical meatheads, you know, they don't know the truth. And then God moves upon the face of their waters, right? And says, let there be light. Let there be light, and there was light. Christ says, I am the light of the world. Let there be Christ, and there was Christ. And God saw it and said that it was good. And God saw the light and that it was good. And then God divided the light from the darkness. Do you see? We were totally in darkness. And then the truth moves upon our understanding. And now there's a light within us. And then that light is separated from the darkness within us. So in other words, if, if you were to put it in natural terms, right? If there was a great, great truth that was hidden and that we are all ignorant to, okay, say a flat earth, for example, right? If one day the lights go on and you understand it, then you're delivered from it or vice versa. If you're confused, if you're ignorant, when God moves, the truth is revealed and you are set free. And God saw the light and he called it day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now this is the thing, okay? So you have dark, you have light, you have truth, and you have lies. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of those waters. God's ways are above, man's ways are beneath. A firmament. Let there be an expanse, a firmament. Let there be something that separates the two. If you're looking at the human brain, the firmament would be the corpus callosum. You know that thing that separates the right and the left hemisphere? You know, your creation with your logic. And God said, let the firmament be in the midst of the waters. And what is that? Heaven. And where, is, where does God dwell? So God is actually in this firmament according to the scriptures, which the heaven that Jesus talked about, the kingdom of heaven, the reign of heaven, the rule of heaven, doesn't come with observation. You can't say, look, it's out there in space because it's within you. And divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. 
And God said, let the heaven, the waters be gathered together into one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. God saw that it was good. Now, you know what's interesting about this word water? It literally means the water of the feet. So that water beneath the firmament is like urine. Okay. And it's also translated as dangerous, violence, ignorance, and transitory things. God said, let the gathering of the waters be called seas. These waters are not the water that's above. These waters are the, uh, the lies of mankind. That's why you see the, uh, the beast in Revelation. You see the whore riding the beast and uh, sitting on the waters, which they say are the nations and the tongues, people that are ignorant, people who are void of the truth, who are empty, who are without form just being confused. So perhaps there is a, uh, a deeper meaning to uh, Genesis 1. Perhaps it is about you. Because, you know, and if you look at Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, you know, in Genesis 2, it looks a lot like God created man first. There's like a different uh, scenario. Genesis 1 goes, it starts this way, this way, this way, this way, and then the pinnacle of creation is man. And then in the next summary, it starts off with man and goes, it's interesting because it is a spiritual and a literal interpretation for us all. It is a heaven and an earth for us all. And I hope each and every one of you have the best day ever. I hope you do share this video around and I hope that it hasn't offended anybody. And, I, and I'm sorry that I, I'm not on board yet. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not. And I, I say yet because you never know. I just happen to believe that it is the way it is, you know, just the way I know it to be. So forgive a guy. If, uh, you know, but I got a lot of other stuff to offer. If I am wrong, Lord, teach me the truth no matter what the cost. You see, I do that. I don't just laugh things off because who knows anything? All I know is you better love and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.